baseball royalty came to town two days ago, and the top of the A's regal rotation was set up to spar. Unfortunately for the green and gold, the Knights of Gotham have showed no mercy. Today, the A's will send Sir Gio Gonzalez out to joust and get a victory before the green and gold depart for a 10-game journey. Can the A's salvage the last battle versus the Bronx Bombers? Stay tuned. The final game of the homestand is next. It is another rainy day in the Bay Area, but the rain has stopped, so we will play baseball this afternoon here at the Overstock.com Coliseum. Derek Jeter and the Yankees going for the sweep of the athletics, but Gio Gonzalez has other ideas. He's going to try to salvage the final game of the series. It is the final game of the homestand as well. The New York Yankees and the Oakland A's coming up on Comcast Sportsnet California. A good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. So the series so far has been dominated by the Yankees. And, Ray, the problem is the Yankees have jumped out on top in both games. And then you get behind, and you sort of say, oh, boy, here we go again to this Yankee team. You know, we talked about 50% of the runs by the Yankees as a result of the home run. Both games in this series have been a result of the home run and the Yankees getting on the board in the first inning. Derek Jeter, of course, going for 3,000 hits. He did that on Monday afternoon. Then Martin Teixeira got a curveball from Trevor Cahill. A two-run home run. They would add another run very quickly before uh, the pitcher Colon took the mound. He had a lead. And last night, the same thing. Derek Jeter, hard hit ball up the middle. Mark Ellis thought he should have caught it. No way. And then Curtis Granderson got a fastball from Brett Anderson in the first inning. Two to nothing for Freddie Garcia. That's all the Yankees would need. And unfortunately, there are highlights for the Yankees, lowlights for the Athletics. Get through the first inning, take a chance of winning a ball game. So the Yankees have defeated the Athletics nine consecutive yeah. times. We hope that ends today. It'll be Gio Gonzalez against the veteran right-hander A.J. Burnett. So that is your pitching matchup. We come back to the Coliseum. We'll have lineups and first pitch as the A's try to hit the road on a winning note. A's Yankees coming up next.
California is brought to you by AT&T and by Toyota. Check out the great deals at your local Toyota dealer today. Welcome back to the Overstock.com Coliseum and sunshine at the ballpark after a morning full of rain. But it's a comfortable afternoon as we get set for the series finale and the homestand finale. The A's and the Yankees. Well, just keep the rain away. A lot of threats, but uh, they're starting on time. The forecast uh, much show that should be able to get a lot of this game in. Hopefully all of it before rain does come, which is expected. So the A's in the alternate gold jerseys take the field behind Gio Gonzalez. Here's the game time weather brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is open daily. So it's a cool afternoon as expected. Maybe the, the warning track a little damp. The outfield probably a little bit wet. But obviously the field was covered. Let's look at the Yankees lineup for this afternoon. It'll be Jeter leading off, followed by Granderson, Teixeira, Alex Rodriguez. Alex Rodriguez will be the designated hitter today. Then it's Cano, Swisher, Mark Jones, and Eduardo Nunez will play third base. And Joe Gonzalez making his first start. Of course, the first day of the month of June. Finished May. A very positive sign. Three wins and five starts for the left-hander. Five and two record, 217. Earn run average and trying to salvage at least one win in this three game series against the New York Yankees. And we'll talk about perhaps one of his best games. That was in uh, July of 09. But we'll do that after you do the defense. I'm going to do the defense right now. It's Willingham, Crisp, and Sweeney in the outfield. Who's been off Pennington, Ellis, Jackson around the infield. And Kurt Suzuki is the catcher. So Suzuki has made the throw down to second base, and we are set to go June 1st. So the month of May is over. So if you're a player and you had a bad month, you're thrilled. If you're a player who had a good month, well, you say, oh, that doesn't make any difference. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's amazing that already the third month of this uh, 2011 season is about to begin today and let's just hope that Derek Jeter from the A standpoint does not get a base hit or get on base to start this game the way he has done the first two looking for 3,000 hits he's not wasting any time trying to get there. Jeter Gonzalez kicks the first pitch of the ball game is down around the knees for a strike. So we are underway 1238 start time here at the Coliseum. Jeter, Granderson, and Teixeira. Back to back strikes to start the ball game. Yankees won game one five to nothing. Game two, ten to three. So they have dominated the first two games of this series. Breaking ball, Jeter takes it in the dirt. So Gio Gonzalez looking for. His sixth win of the year. He has the fourth best ERA in the American League and has not lost a game since the 25th of April. Jeter. A little bit of an emergency swing to stay alive. Another month of May was outstanding for Gio. 35 strikeouts. 3 0 record, a couple of no decisions. That went to left field. Willingham's racing back near the wall, and it's going to bounce off the wall. And the Yankees have something going in the very first inning. Jeter with a double. In the Dodge Charger keys to the game, let's hurry up and say what they are for this first inning. It's too far along. Nine straight Yankee victories. Will it end today? We all hope so. Trying to be the stopper to survive the first inning. That's why we want to get through these quickly. Because he's already given up a leadoff double. And the Yankees don't let him own the plate. And of course, people say, well, the Yankees are swinging the way they are. You know, maybe push them back a little bit. But, you know, you got to make, if you make quality pitches, you don't have to worry about that. And so far, the first two games, not a lot of quality pitches have been thrown. And the Yankees have taken really deep. Well, all right. So, so you brush a guy back. You know what he's going to do? Get mad. He's going to stand up. He's going <laughs> to dig in again. That's right. And he's going to give you good at bat. That's yeah. what 
the Yankees have veteran hitters. I'm not sure that that's the answer. No, and, making and, quality pitches. Yeah, and, and anytime a, a team dominates as the Yankees have in the first two games, you, you know, start thinking, well, but you know, a pitcher is going to want to use both sides of the plates regardless. And when that happens, then you don't necessarily have to push back again if you make quality pitches. And pitch to Granderson by Brett Anderson last night a fastball. Unlike this fastball down and in, it was in the middle of the plate. He had a two-run home run. To share it, hit a curveball on Monday. That was not particularly a great pitch with a couple of strikes. And the pitch that Jeter hit the left field was a hanging curveball with two strikes. He wanted to throw it to the back foot. And you talked about the emergency swing by Derek Jeter with a fastball. He probably was looking for the curveball yep. because scouting reports show that Gio likes to go to the hard curve for a strikeout to righties. Try to throw it hard to the back foot, the right foot, and try to get a swing and miss. Swing and a miss. Granderson strikes out. And the ball back to Gio goes over his head. And he scrambles after it. Not a good curveball. He threw it hard. And we saw last night with Brett Anderson striking Granderson out his second at bat through the hard curve, got him swinging. So, in essence, a very good job of pitching by Gio because he did not allow. He just did not reach up far enough. But Gio did not allow Granderson to pull the ball to advance Jeter to third, where he would have been standing with one out. He's still at second with one. Teixeira slices one foul. But talking about you know the knocking somebody down, it's they look at these hitters. I, I don't think Alex Rodriguez or Mark Teixeira are going to be intimidated. And you don't want to make them angry because they're already very good hitters. I mean, I think if you're if you're going to concentrate on anything, concentrate on making better pitches as opposed to hey, I'm going to send a message right away by throwing inside. Yeah. It's, it's a waste work. of time. Yeah, it's not Swing and a miss as Teixeira chased a high fastball. So one and two to count. And one thing about the Yankees in the case of a runner in scoring position, you will not see a lot of taking. And I think Mark Teixeira right there is just uh, an example of why he's such a good RBI man. He does not take a lot of pitches. Strike three call. Except that, that time, yeah. Now that was a perfectly thrown fastball by Gio to the outside part of the plate. After swung and missed a high fastball, came back, painted the outside corner. Kurt Suzuki wanted it inside, stayed to the outside, but he framed it perfectly, kept it in the strike zone. And Jim Joyce, the veteran, very good umpire, realized it was a strike, even though the location might not have been where Kurt Suzuki had wanted it to be. There's a home plate umpire, Jim Joyce, and the rest of the crew. We've seen a couple behind the plate. Jim Joyce, you know he's here. Just listen. Good curveball there from Gonzalez in for a strike to Alex Rodriguez. That is where Gonzalez has really been good this year, and that's how you keep your ERA down. He goes 2.17. Well, we saw Alex uh, Rodriguez last night. A couple of RBI situations is kind of toned down. He's a home run hitter, there's no doubt. But he also is an RBI man. Last night, a couple of hits to drive in runs with singles up the middle and to left field. And he drives that one toward right field, and it's over the head of Ryan Sweeney. And Jeter's going to come in to score. Alex Rodriguez into second with an RBI double. That's pretty good hitting right there. Ray, you just said it. He's as much of an RBI guy as he is a home run hitter, and got to give him credit there. On well, the curveball, back door, and he just and he inside out position. swing to right field. This ball hit so hard, Ryan Swinney looked like he had a chance of slicing away, but it just kept carrying, and just like that, Gio two strikeouts. Looked like he's going to get out of the inning, and you know, there's just always, unfortunately, from the A's and the pitcher standpoint, there's somebody coming up that can be a threat. Today it's. Rodriguez to the two out hit. So now two away from Mel Ott for ninth on the all time RBI list. Robinson Cano. No, right, watching Jeter 
I mean, that was a really good pitch. Curveball down and away. He almost makes you think that that's the pitch he was looking for. Well, again, I think it's more of just as much thinking if he's going to pitch me away, I'll go to right field, whether it's a breaking ball or a fastball. But Gio wanted to throw the curveball down and in. And had he thrown it there, he might have got a swing and miss. One and one to Robinson Cano, who has 11 home runs and 37 runs batted in, to go along with a 283 batting average. A run for A.J. Burnett here in the first inning. Cap toward the right side. Jackson has it. Steps on the back side. Retired Alex Rodriguez with an RBI double. Half an inning. And the Yankees have a one nothing lead. Been a rain a couple moments ago, but it has stopped. Here's the A's lineup: Chris De Jesus, Jesus is the DH today. And Connor Jackson, Josh Willingham, Ryan Sweeney, Kurt Suzuki, and the bottom three: Ellis Kuzminov, and Pennington. And a veteran AJ Burnett on the mound for the Yankees, trying to follow what Colon and Garcia did. And the A's hope that is not the case. Matter of fact, Burnett is above 500 by two games, whereas Colon and Garcia got to the 500 mark with a victory. Fastball curveball change up and like most veteran pitchers if you have an RBI possibility don't look fastball. He's got a good curve. He'll throw any time plus change up. So Coco steps in to lead it off. Nunez the third baseman weighing on the grass. Swing a foul ball. Chris pitting 266 with a couple of home runs, 18 runs batted in. He's one for nine in this series. He's two for 19 in his career against A.J. Burnett, but one of those two hits a home run. Coco, second in the American League in stolen bases, third in the league in triples. 16 steals and four triples. The A's know that uh, they get this game in, have an off day tomorrow. It doesn't get any easier at Fenway Park on Friday night. So it'd be nice to get a win today. It's Mr. October. Jackson, of course, and as always with the Yankees when they're in town. Reggie Jackson great career in Oakland but you'd have to look at his career as being a Yankee just all the great things he did 
He was Mr. October with the A's in the World Series. I'm not fortunate not having played in 72, but definitely in 73 and 74. Exceeded great expectations. Criff strikes out. The defense for the Yankees today. Jones in left, Granderson in center, Swisher in right, Nunez Jeter on the left side, Cano to Teixeira on the right side, Russell Martin once again behind the plate. So that'll bring up David DeJesus. We've been talking about Reggie, that's pretty good hardware though. Three rings with the A's, yep. two with the Yankees, yep. five total. One for each finger. Against the Dodgers. Home run, first pitch, home run, just home run three consecutive. So he beat the Dodgers three times then, right? Yeah. Back to back with the Yankees and then also with the Athletics in 74. So Tommy Lasorda will probably say, I saw nothing. <laughs> Matter of fact, there was a shot the Yankee was with, uh, Reggie was with the Yankees playing the Dodgers and Reggie was caught between first and second and kind of maneuvered his body to take one. And Lasorda, one of the great arguments of all time. Yes, it is. Uh, Arguing the umpires, but Reggie, a smart base runner, smart player, just happened to move right in front of the throw. And but he did it on purpose. Well, but it just. It's okay. Yeah. It was a good move. Yeah. It worked. But you know, when your back's to the guy throwing, it's, it's kind of you're going in the direction you think the ball is going to be thrown, so it's not like he's looking right at him and getting in front of him. That one's drilled the right center, and that's going to get down. Granderson cannot cut it off, and it's going to go to the wall. And De Jesus will have a one out double. Well, they're playing shallow again, Kipe, as you talked about last night in this series. And that time, although playing straight away might have gotten to it to cut it off, Granderson, but he was shading De Jesus in the left field. Nice leg kick, got the foot down. A nice solid swing by David, who continues to swing the bat very well. And this double shows see Granderson a long run from left center. Angle try to cut it off. Actually, did a good job to keep the Hazers at second instead of a triple. So, a scoring chance for the A's here in the bottom of the first as Connor Jackson steps in. Fastball for a strike. You just heard Jim Joyce. Does not go around as they check with Ron Culpa. Well, breaking ball, and that's what Culpa, the first base umpire, sees. The first base umpire will appear as the right hand hitter, third base for the left hander. Popped up. Jeter out, still backpedaling, shading his eyes. He's got it. Well, that's a good fastball inside, and not much a hitter can do. Probably better suited to take the pitch instead of that swinging important. as Connor Jackson did, because all he can do is this hit the ball in the air, ball running in, a little bit above the belt, and he knew. Good fastball hitter, but not with a pitch like that. So that'll bring up Willingham. Nine home runs, 35 runs batted in for Willingham. The month of May was pretty good for Willingham. He had 20 RBIs in the month. And for the A's, they finished May with a 14. And 15 record. So one game under 500. They were one game under 500 in April as well, 13 and 14. So that is where they are at now 27 and 29. The A's 14 and 14 at home, 13 and 15 on the road. Jay Burnett curveball, which he likes to throw. 
one, especially with runner in scoring position. That, yeah, that's an updated version, Ray, because the Rangers just won three to nothing against the Rays. So with that Rangers win, they now have a one game lead. The Mariners are in second place. How about that? But the A's two under 500, three back, and that's that's always positive. June 1st to know that you have not played really exceptional baseball, but still just be three out to start the new month. Fastball inside. Now the Mariners have just started. It's the bottom of the first. They're wrapping up that series against the Orioles and the Angels and the Royals. Should be getting underway soon. They're scheduled for a day game in Kansas City. So we'll keep a close eye on those other two games, but the Rangers have won their game three to nothing. Willingham rips one to left, and that baby is gone. Nice. And they have it in the first Mark inning. It was a three, two, and a one for the Yankees. Fastball, Miami. high fastball. And what a great, great swing by Josh Willingham on a beautiful sunny afternoon. Josh Newt was gone. He crushed a three one fastball, a surprising three one fastball from A.J. Burnett. You know, three and one veteran pitcher a lot of times would say, Well, I'll take my chances with the next hitter. Yep. And not really challenging, but Burnett did. And give Josh Willingham credit. He went out of the strike zone. They hit a 3 1 fastball. Pitch was up, but he crushed it. And the A's have the lead. I'm surprised too that I don't want to say pitch around, but you have one guy who has 35 RBIs and the guy behind him has five. And that's nothing against Ryan Sweeney, but that's the numbers. Well, and also you're looking at the veteran Josh Willingham. He knows that he's going to expand his strike zone. He's got a runner in scoring position. He's going to try to get him in. And he did. Sweeney bounces out, but Josh Willingham, his 10th home run of the year, he now has 37 RBIs thanks to this two run shot. A's lead 2 to 1 after all. Visit your local Lowe's to cast your MLB All-Star ballot and enter to win a trip to the All-Star game. Compliments of Scott's. Josh Willingham's two-run homer, and the A's have a two-to-one lead top of the second. And Willingham continues to be a major run producer for the Athletics. So if you want to go to the All-Star game, you're going to go to Arizona this year. It is in Phoenix.
Josh Willingham has a chance to yes, be does. spending the all star control. break there. But he is fortunate as well as the athletics and the angels that it is a four day all star break. So even though whoever represents the A's will be in Phoenix and be back and still get to enjoy a couple of days before play resumes the doubleheader on Saturday. After the all star break against the angels a change in the schedule of course planned before the season began to have a regularly scheduled doubleheader. So the all star game Arizona this year Kansas City next year. Do roof, we know who after that roof closed in Arizona no roof in Kansas City. I think in July in Arizona it's a pretty good chance. The roof will be closed. I've not heard about 13 but it's, uh, I'm sure it's already been announced. I would think so too I'm trying to think of a new stadium a new stadium and who would get it. There's some new stadiums that haven't had one obviously. I don't think Philadelphia has had one have they? City Field in New York and they still okay. alternate National America. I think they. It's not official. So they have not made it. St. Louis just had one. Oakland had 187. Yes, they did. Nationals Park in Washington D.C. That's new. And, uh, Swisher hits one high to left field. Willingham's going back. He's looking at the wall. He's got enough room, and he makes the catch. So, his father. What out? Excuse me, Kai. His Father's Day. I'm talking about Father's Day. Oh. Father's Day pack features four games, including the Giants series, and is available at the Plaza Club at only $104. It includes $10 of jumbo ticket added value for each game. Jumbo ticket added value can be used for concessions and merchandise throughout the park. For tickets, go to OaklandAthletics.com. And you're a father of two. You got to appreciate Father's Day weekend. What is it the 19th, right? Yes, it yeah. is San Francisco Giants yeah. weekend. That's right. I tell you, Nick Swisher hit what he thought was a home run, and I thought he got it too, to be honest. But I don't know. It seemed like as Josh Willingham got back to the warning track, it was a parachute came straight down. That usually happens at nighttime here at the Coliseum. Swisher has played enough here to know that on the afternoon games, the ball does carry better, but this one did not. One and one to Russell Martin. Martin hitting 247 with nine homers, 26 runs batted in. Was not in the lineup on Monday. He was yesterday and went 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. So a lot of hits yesterday for the Yankees, but Martin did not have any of them. They had 12 hits to go along with their 10 runs. One pitch is line foul. Gia trying to establish the outside part of the plate. We talked about both sides, especially inside the righties and lefties. But as we have seen throughout the young career for Gio Gonzalez, if he can nail the outside fastball consistently, it's almost unhittable. Right center field, Coco Crisp is over there, and he's got it two out. And that pitch. A rare back, and here's a 94. I'm not going to walk you. Try to hit it. And that's a great challenge pitch for Gio Gonzalez because he does have a very good fastball. He's also Martin, a good fastball hitter. But there's no reason in some cases. We talked about Josh Wallingham against A.J. Burnett, but case three and two, just, just throw a fastball. It's your percentage pitch to throw a strike. It doesn't always mean that a hitter is going to hit it. Fastball curveball 63 and 32 percent and just 5 percent changes and that's pretty accurate. I guess if you watch every pitch and you note that it's a fastball curveball changeup you got a pretty good idea of the percentages right? Yep. Just missed outside 2 and 0. Oh. Jones 237 with four home runs 10 RBIs. The Yankees coming into today with a 30 and 23 record. 
Starting the action, they have a one game lead over the Red Sox, game and a half over the Rays, three over Toronto, and the Rays have already lost their game. The Yankees on top in the tight AL East. And a four pitch walk to Andrew Jones. So that's the first walk by Gio Gonzalez, and that'll bring up Eduardo Nunez. Third baseman, number 26, Eduardo Nunez. For the Yankees, they are three and two on this nine game road trip. They will have an off day tomorrow, and then they will play the Angels in Anaheim Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So the Yankees get an off day in Southern California. Under Derek Jeter, that's why he said last night about today in the rain, he said, let's stay here all day. Guys, when they get an off day schedule, they want to enjoy it. And of course, the possibility if this game rained out, both clubs off tomorrow, could have been, I don't know how they look at the 20 consecutive games played, and this was a 20th consecutive for the A's. Mm -hmm. But if it's rained out, it doesn't count, does it? So it's only 19. Well, the Yankees just had last Thursday off. And they will have Monday off as well. So that part of the scheduling would not be an issue for the Yankees. But right now, at least, the weather looks yeah. okay. But for Gio Gonzalez, two starts in May were rain games. One, he gave up seven runs, got rained out, didn't count. Had a 14 to nothing game against the Angels that it rained. A start that was delayed, but the A's able to complete the game, and Gio won that game. So he was three and zero, oh, two no decisions and a gift. That's right. In May. Swing and a miss, and a game that he was close to winning in San Francisco when he left with a four to two lead. He's lost that one. Yes, as we have seen in this series briefly, he does not get cheated and really get a curveball and a hard one for two strikes. Challenge. This one popped up just below us, so the count remains one and two. <laughs> Watch what happens. Oh, my. Right now, he's saying, You owe me a half a beer. He said, He wasn't happy either. Oh, that beer probably cost more than a baseball. He is not <laughs> happy. He is not. Oh, he's going to go. He's got to go pour it in there. I don't want yours. I want a brand new one. No, he's just going to cheer. Let's go buy me a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, here's the deal. Fill me up. <laughs> right now. And that's probably where he's going. He is. <laughs> he's, he's a, I didn't come for baseballs. Got it in the hand. He's okay. Hit hard, but Pennington takes care of it. Side retired. So we go to the bottom of the second. It's two to one athletics.
Station, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. We'll have a full recap of our game here at the Coliseum between the A's and the Yankees. 30 A's in 30 days, Joe Gonzalez, and a draft preview. Some Bay Area kids. How about Sean Dunstan Jr.? Wasn't he just a little guy like a couple years ago, if I remember correctly? Was it Sean Dunstan yeah, just man. a little guy yeah. not too long ago? All right, they stay. Player, major league player. So the MLB draft coming up for 2011. Sean Dunstan Jr. So we'll keep an eye on that name. Tyson Ross's little brother. Keep an eye on that name. So one and one the count to Kurt Suzuki. Followed by Ellison Kuzminov here in the bottom of the second inning. On the right side, Cano has it. Suzuki is retired, so that's out number one here in the bottom of the second. Well, some very important news to pass along on this uh, special day. It's a very special day from the Susie and Matt Weiss family. Oh, yeah. Congratulations right. to the Weisses on their. Daughter Molly Ann Weiss, born this morning at 714, 19 and 3 fourths inches. And no wonder Susie said, Let's go, eight pounds, one ounce. <laughs> Baby girl. So I saw Susie two days ago. Well, she was here yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so she was hopeful that, uh, of course, Matt does a great job downstairs and uh, working for the A's as well. And she said, Well, if you just get through this homestand, I said, You have the baby, Matt will be there. And I'm uh, sure early this morning. They went to the hospital and Molly and Weiss. Right. Welcome on this June 1st of 2011. So the A's trying to win a game for Molly Ann yep. on this day, but congratulations here. Good people. Matt and Susie Weiss. I know what I didn't see Matty downstairs. Something that happened. was yeah. probably yeah. a good sign. But I saw her on Monday. Esther, uh, you're close, right? She said this weekend. I said, well, that's about as close as you're going to get. That, that was the due date. So it happened today. And they get a uh, long road trip while the A's go on. So Maddie will be there taking care of her son. And now a new baby. So Jack and Molly. Jack and Molly. Yeah. So that would be a, a very good Father's Day coming up, as always. That would be the Giants weekend. Next homestand for the Athletics. Kansas City, San Francisco, a week of baseball. At least that much I know. I beyond that, are the A's here after that? No, we go <laughs> to, we do oh, our that's right. interleague that's, that's trip, right. which we're looking forward to, even though it's an East Coast trip. But that's right. it's two stadiums that we haven't seen, which I enjoy that. New York, we see City Field where the Mets play, and Phillies. We go to the Phillies in their new ballpark. And that would be another East Coast trip for the A's, one of several this year. Three and two to Mark Ellis. Drummers out, day game, night game, doesn't matter. Up and in, and Ellis takes the one out walk. So that'll bring up Kuzminov. So the month of June just peaked at the schedule, right? 26 games for the A's in the month, but only 10 at home. You got 16 road games, including two East Coast trips. This one coming up in when we were talking about New York and Philadelphia. So a lot of road games. So a challenge month schedule wise for the Athletics with the road games. Remember the, uh, the month of May, though, the A's only had one off day. June, they'll have four. So that will make a little bit of difference, but the A's will have to play well on the road. If they're going to climb back over that 500 mark. Well, at least the A's on this road game is good to hit first, and maybe they can put some runs on the board in the first <laughs> inning. That's true. Before their pitcher takes them out. Remember that stretch with the Giants and the Angels for, I think, five consecutive yep. games in which it. Club scored a run in the first inning. Actually, you no, know, it started that Thursday here, the three in San Francisco mm -hmm. and one in Anaheim. Nunez has it. 
to Cano for one, and that's a double play. Cano made the pivot. He just kind of stepped over Ellis, turned the double play, side to tie. History will be made as the Bruins and the Canucks battle for hockey's ultimate prize. The Bruins haven't won a Stanley Cup since 1972. The Canucks have never won the Cup since they rejoined the league in 1970. It starts tonight at 5 o'clock on your local NBC channel. So game one of the Stanley Cup finals is tonight. That gets us to game two of the Stanley Cup finals. What is that? Which is Saturday. And it's in Vancouver, but it'll. Bruins playing, obviously, so that game will start at 8 p.m. in Boston. So think that, 8 p.m. in Boston. Okay. And that is why our Saturday game, which was originally a 7 o'clock start, was moved to a 1 o'clock start East Coast time. Because Red Sox said, you know what? I don't think we want to be on the same time as the Boston Bruins in the Stanley Cup Finals. So they moved the time. So instead of 1 o'clock, instead of 7 o'clock, we'll play at 1. The Red Sox said we want to keep our consecutive uh, well, that's sellouts possible too, yeah. intact. We don't want, well, I think they would have sold out. They're going to sell out regardless whether they sell out and sell the tickets or buy the tickets and give them away. But they'll keep the sellout streak alive when they should because they have a good team. But that's smart because. Uh, I'm sure you know, hockey wouldn't have to worry about World Series because uh, that's just a regular season game started then, right? Yep. No uh, postseason or championship on the line. Yeah. Hockey's very, oh. very popular in Boston with not only the Bruins, but college hockey as well. Boston when did the Bruins last win? 72. Wow. They're pumped. Jeter, shallow right field, Sweeney is under these guys. A lot of times we talk about the uh, catcher and pitcher working together and the importance of a catcher realizing what a hitter did in his previous at bat or throughout the game. And Kurt Suzuki now about had it. Derek Jeter one and two Curtis and called a curveball that Jeter hit for double in the first at bat, first inning. This time 3 1, challenged with a fastball. And the future Hall of Famer, Yankee captain, hit a softly Hit fly ball to right field. So just a matter of changing it up a little bit. Challenging three and one and got the job done. Granderson struck out swinging in the first inning. Fastball is high, one and one.
to share in the on deck circle. He's with a two to one lead thanks to Willingham's two run homer in the bottom of the first inning. The end of the bat. Sweeney coming in, and Sweeney goes into a slide. He makes the catch for out number two. Well, he's fortunate because he broke back on the ball. Granderson with tremendous power and big swing. Outfielders have a tendency to break back, and Ryan Sweeney did. You see him pick it up and then come on charging going into the slide. And of course, recognizing that the ball was hit more off the end of the bat, that was after the initial move, able to use his speed to get back to the ball. Shara. Coco Chris to his left, and Gio Gonzalez has a three up, three down inning with three fly ball outs. Bottom of the third coming up, but it'll be Pennington, Chris, and De Jesus. Who are the four shortstops in Major League Baseball history with more gold gloves than Derek Jeter? Maybe a couple from Venezuela. Oh, well, the scale's got a few more. Right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, is Derek? <laughs> Maybe more than that. Well, what's he? Aparicio's. I was thinking of Aparicio there. and maybe even David Concepcion, another one as well. One and one the count to Cliff Pennington. Pennington got the night off last night. He's sitting on a nine game hitting streak. Pennington will be followed by Crisp and then DeJesus here in the bottom of the third. The White Sox leading the Red Sox seven to four bottom of the ninth inning and that is. A potential three game sweep by the White Sox. At Fenway. And we'll let you know when that game goes. Final Pennington swings and misses at the pitch in the dirt. Second strikeout for A.J. Burnett. And here's Chris. Center fielder, number four, Coco Chris. 
Chris struck out swinging in the first inning against Burnett. Corner infielders come in again for Chris. Looking at AJ Burnett's career numbers, he's 115 and 103. And this is his third year with the Yankees. His first year was pretty good. He was 13 and 9 in 09, but last year, he started out really well, but his second half. Was miserable. And he finished the year 10 and 15 with a 5.26 ERA. So those are his two years in a Yankees uniform. Originally with the Mets, it was part of the Al Leiter trade with the Florida Marlins, Toronto, and then signed that big five year contract with the Yankees. Burnett is 34 years old in his 12th year in the big leagues. I think Derek Jeter has five. Something like that? Five? That sounds five. about right. Another breaking ball, and Chris takes it to even the count at two and two. Now, when Omar Vizquel did not win a gold glove in Seattle, he got upset. Huh. And he ran off a very long string after he did not win gold glove and probably deserved it. Deserved it, but did not. And I think also uh, the Orioles were just in town. Talking to Jim Palmer, he's talking about some of the great players he had playing behind him. There was one called Mark Belanger. Stick. He had a few. Mm -hmm. he, he could, they said he could play shortstop and pick it with a pair of pliers. He was so good. <laughs> Alex Rodriguez was a shortstop also, had a couple of gold gloves at that position. Came to New York and the captain was at short, so he moved to third. Not a bad move. Because you want your power to corners, and the Yankees definitely have power to share it first, and Alex Rodriguez at third. And they will for a while. Yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> There's the walk. So good at bat by Coco Crisp. Enter for your chance to throw out the ceremonial first pitch before the A's against the Giants. Baybridge game, Friday, June 17, plus MVP tickets to the game. Visit any East Bay Roundtable Pizza to enter for your chance to win between now and June 5th. For official rules, please visit participating roundtable pizza restaurants. And if any of those roundtable pizza restaurants want to let us sample a pizza, my partner just absolutely enjoys roundtable pizza. Yeah, I have no problem. His name is Glenn Kaiser. Coliseum Way. <laughs> 94621 or just deliver to Walona or Juanita. Third level. And they'll make sure we get it. Even Mikey, if he's up on the camera. And have some as well. Oh, yeah. Stick his hand in there. David Jesus, who doubled and scored on the Willingham home run in the first inning. So, our partner, uh, probably Ken Korak, back in the radio booth. I wonder if he has been down to visit his car lately. <laughs> See if he has any gas left. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> well, he wanted to just fill up before they had to go to the airport on the trip, leaving tomorrow. Just think generally it's important to it's just important to when you get out of your car to <laughs> shut your engine off. <laughs> and the windshield wiper is in case it's raining. <laughs> That's a man excited to go to work. Huh? Uh, he's thinking about the ball game. Yeah. 
I think when you start breaking down AJ Burnett's career while you're driving in, you are going to be distracted, <laughs> and that's going to be the reason why you would leave your engine running. <laughs> or it's a an engine that doesn't sound very loud. <laughs> <laughs> he has such a fine automobile. Yeah. Here. Chris with the good jump, and he's in there with a stolen base. Well, surprisingly, and again, we talk about pitchers at times, if they do not get a sign from the bench to throw over, they don't throw. And Coco Crisp just had such a big lead off first base. He's leaning and leaning and going and going and still was almost thrown out by Russell Martin. A very good strong throw. Derek Jeter taking the ball in front of the bag. Tagged him in the midsection with Coco's hand on the bag. So fortunately, a successful steal. That was Jim Wolf making the call at second base. But well, if there's ever time to throw to first, that was it. If the pitcher is just looking over at the runner, because he definitely was indicating he's going to be stealing, and he did. And Jesus goes around, and the count is one and two. Uh, look at Coco going to the outside of the bag, and Jeter in front, and the tag, hand. He's out. Yeah, he might have, unless the fingertips were on the bag. 19 or make it for Ellsbury. Coco was 17. Raja Davis been injured. He still has 15. And each year old, if he wanted to, could steal 100. One two pitch to Jesus. High fastball, and he swings and misses. So that's the third strikeout for A.J. Burnett. Well, AJ Burnett threw a curveball for strike two on a check swing and then went up the ladder. His catcher wanted it, threw it up in the zone, out of the strike zone, and De Jesus knows that put the runner at second base. He did a good job taking a pitch for Coco to steal, but then not able to get a good pitch to drive to drive in a run. So here's Jackson. Breaking ball is a strike on the inside corner. That's a backup curveball. Did not have a normal break. Martin outside. The pitch stayed inside. And Jim Joyce looking right down the barrel. Connor Jackson hit with a runner at second and one out in the first inning and popped out to Jeter. He's got a runner in scoring position here, except with two outs. Jackson hitting 252 on the season. You have a hot hitter hitting behind you. You can look at your at bat, possibly getting a pretty good pitch to hit, or try to get on and bring the hot hitter to the plate. Of course, it's Josh Willingham. Kevin fellow behind him. Just looking on. And Kevin's moved up in the world. So sure down knows. in the A's bullpen to behind the home plate and bat boy. Not as many people to talk to for Kevin now. Missed again. Three and one. And as hot as Willingham is, there's no way Burnett is pitching carefully to Connor Jackson. And again, that's more of a credit to Willingham and the way he is hitting the ball. And nothing against Connor Jackson. I think right now Connor can look for a pretty good pitch to drive. At least that's the way it used to be, where you would consider who the next hitter was. Three one pitch to Jackson. That's in for a strike. Three and two. Jackson thought maybe it was a little outside. Well, it's a fastball and a paint fastball outside corner. Three two. He missed outside, and that's another walk. 
On a 3-1 fastball to Josh Willingham in the first inning with a couple of outs. Challenged. And Willingham accepted the challenge and no doubt. Double figures for the A's left fielder. And a very, very strong first couple of months in the start of his third month for Willingham. His former manager, the Marlins, Joe Girardi looking on. First pitch to Willingham he is low. That game is a final now. The White Sox seven and the Red Sox four. So that is a three game sweep by Chicago at Fenway Park. Red Sox have now lost four in a row. So we're either going to say. Well, the A's will see the a struggling Boston Red Sox team, or we could say the A's will see a team that is not happy and they're going to come out and play. I don't think the Red Sox are ever struggling at no, Fenway here, Park. They're home park. They'll have a day off tomorrow, will Boston, and then get ready for the Athletics. Boston now 30 and 26 with their loss. And Bob Guerin, Ron Romantic with the off day tomorrow. Actually have announced the rotation, so they are skipping Moscoso. That's the Eastern standings as we look at the Red Sox, 30 and 26. The Yankees, three-game difference in the loss column. The Rays and the Red Sox have lost today, so I'm sure the Yankees will see that. So Trevor Cahill will pitch on Saturday. Brett Anderson on Sunday. Nunez right near the bag steps on the bag side retired a strand a pair we go to the fourth it'll be Rodriguez Cano and Swisher. Dot com to post your question. Dan from Sparks, Nevada asks, why do the A's wear gold tops only when Gio pitches? Because Gio wants to wear the classy uniform. That's why. The alternate gold. The A's have had an alternate black jersey the last few years. Justin Dukeshire also wore the black. I think Brett Anderson might have worn the black. Gio, of course, wore the, wore the black jersey. And Gio likes the alternate. Because he knows in the 70s, early 70s, the A's won three world championship wearing this colored gold. And he says there's a lot of history in that uniform. So he's trying to follow suit, trying to get the A's another championship. So home games, it's the only time the club will wear the alternate gold. And I can't think of many pitchers that have worn it except you. I don't think so either. 
Every, everybody wore it on uh, 70s night last year, even my partner. Jackson knocks it down, but Rodriguez is going to be aboard. It's going to be a base hit for Rodriguez, so he's two for two. Jackson dove for it, could not come up with it cleanly. Now well, that's a funny spin on it, and Robinson actually, as he caught the ball, a little bit of a highlight just threw it into foul territory. There's the heel of the glove again we talked about, whether it's a fielder's glove for a baseman's mitt. It's hard and trying to get it into the webbing of his glove. Geo covering, could not get it done. So here's Cano with the leadoff man aboard. The Orioles and the Mariners won one game in the fourth inning. Michael Pineda is pitching for the Mariners. He's trying to become a seven game winner. John Lester is the only other seven game winner in the American League coming into today's action. So Michael Pineda for the Mariners is becoming quite a story. And that is it. Mariners going for the sweep of that series. Just a bit low, 2 0. Oh. Seattle will finish that game today and then they will get ready to host the Tampa Bay Rays for a four game series Thursday through Sunday. The Rangers are heading to Cleveland after their win today. They will play four at the Indians. The road trip continues for Texas. So Tampa Bay is going to get on the flight, come all the way to Seattle, that's a long, and not come to Oakland. <laughs> well, that's true. the longest flight yeah. in baseball, I believe, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Seattle to St. Petersburg. 3-0 pitch misses outside. Single and a walk to lead off the fourth. Well, be sure before, during, and after the game to log on to CSNCalifornia.com for A's Insider, the great Paul Gutierrez. He has wall-to-wall -wall coverage of your Oakland Athletics, in-depth analysis, exclusive interviews, breaking news, and scouting reports all season long. CSNCalifornia.com, your interactive home for A's baseball all season long. So, go to the website, check out the A's Insider, Paul Gutierrez. Nick Swisher, who just missed a home run, his first at bat. Now with nobody out. It's a 3 2 fastball. Geo, a strikeout pitcher, but two big ones in the first inning, but allowed a two out run scoring double to Alex Rodriguez. So Swisher steps in. First pitch to Swisher, and he shows bunt, and he takes low, oh, missed somewhere. Geo's asking the home plate umpire, "Is that low?" Wow, that was not low. Surprising, this ball looked like it's right down the middle, not low, not outside. How was it missed? Right at the knees. And that's for the crouch. Hey, that's. Sweet. Bunt again, and he takes low. And Ron Romanic will jog out, and again, this is where the A's watch Geo very closely. If he shows a little frustration, and they will immediately get to the mound. They being either Ron Romanic or even Kurt Suzuki, the catcher, will get out there. And Bob Guerin did his last start, taking Geo out, and was ejected for standing up for his pitcher. You have Tommy Cam. I'd like to have seen the first pitch to Nick Swisher because it definitely did not look like it was outside. It didn't look like it was low. And he's attempted to bunt with two pitches. And after six consecutively thrown out of the strike zone. In fact, he was only thrown one strike this inning. 
And that was to Alex Rodriguez. The ball he hit to Connor Jackson. So should not bunting this time, and he drives with the left, and this baby is gone. Three run homer for Swisher, and the Yankees lead four to two. And you knew he was not going to be bunting two and zero. Oh. I don't know if Ron Romanek actually got to get back to the dugout and sit down before that pitch is thrown. That's the fourth home run of the series for the Yankees, and all of them have done damage big time. A 2 0 fastball right down the middle. Really, it's not that much different than the first pitch thrown to him that was called a ball. Put him in the hole, drilled the fastball, and it was a no doubt of this one, a no doubt home run. So, number four for Swisher. So Russell Martin is the hitter. Best way to get back in the game, right? Is a home run. And that one not only got the Yankees back in the game, gave them a lead. It was just two to one. Three and zero to out to Russell Martin. Way outside, not close. So a four pitch walk after the three run homer. Now this is the 2 0 to Nick Swisher. And I thought he hit one his first at bat. There's no doubt about Jones. this at bat. That right, 310 hitting right handed, 175 hitting left handed for Swisher this year. So you're right, once it got to 2 0, the bunt sign came off. Andrew Jones walked in the second inning. And he got an absolutely huge jump. So not even a chance to throw. Well, he was running as Gio was maybe even looking at him. So it's a little bit of frustration going through Gio Gonzalez right now. Watch Andrew Jones. He's running and any move at all where Gio comes up with the front foot and just comes straight up. And that was Martin, I beg your pardon, not Jones. Jones is a hitter. Nine steals in this series for the Yankees. And that one on the outside corner. Nice to have that one with Swisher. That changed the whole inning. So Martin at second, 3 1 to Andrew Jones. Big swing and he hits one high to center, shallow. Crisp comes in to make the catch. Got away with one there. Well, that's the first out here in the fourth inning. Well, you had to know Andrew Jones was going to now Benny. do a little lift and separate. Three one. Eduardo Nunez. So Eduardo Nunez, the third baseman, steps in. Nunez grounded out to the shortstop in the second inning.
The Angels and the Royals are underway. No score in the third inning in Kansas City. Chatwood and Paulino. Pitching matchup there. Tyler Chatwood with a three and two record. A's have seen him a couple times. Good curveball there, first drop. Minnesota and Detroit will be tonight. Cleveland and Toronto also a night game. Pop up Suzuki drops the mask and Kurt has it two outs. A day game never know what kind of. You. Gio pointing and yelling to his catcher Kurt Suzuki as Suzuki. Pick the ball up. Two clouds and. Look right up in the blue sky. Sometimes it's difficult to pick up the ball. So here's the top of the order in Derek Jeter. First pitch strike to Jeter, who is one for two. Doubled and scored in the first. He's got four hits in this series. And he is now 16 hits away from 3,000. You can't really figure it out too much, Ray, but it'd be nice to see Jeter get the 3,000th hit at home in front of the Yankee fans. After this weekend series in Anaheim. The Yanks will go home for a 10 game homestand. So it's a pretty good chance. It's thir 13 games and need 16. Three against Boston, four against Cleveland, three against Texas. So that's a decent possibility. O2 pitch, and that hit Jeter in the foot. Sharp breaking ball and Jeter is aboard on the hit by pitch. Martin stays at second. I had him on two and then tried to go to the breaking ball and. The effectiveness of Gio's curveball to right handers is not been where he wants Number it. 14, Jeter Rangers. the front toe actually did not even make it to the back foot. Try to get out of the way lifted his. They hit the ground. <laughs> Might have avoided his foot. Change direction enough, I guess, would indicate that he hit something, but maybe not G. Fastball for a strike to Granderson. Three for 11 in the series for Granderson, but he has knocked in four runs, all four coming last night. Geo quickly ahead. 0 and 2. Martin at second, Jeter at first. High fastball, and that is a swing, says Daryl Cousins. And Granderson strikes out. But Nick Swisher does damage to his old team. A three run homer. His fourth of the year, so we go to the bottom of the fourth. 4 2 New York.
Oh, gloves than Derek Jeter. We know the names, folks. Ozzy Smith, Omar Vizquel, Luis Aparicio, Mark Belanger. And Dave Concepcion had five, as does Jeter. So that's uh, three. Venezuela, that's actually four. Ozzy, well, no, Ozzy Smith, no, I was thinking Ozzy again. Vizquel, Concepcion, and Aparicio. Yes, what? Well, the A's all of a sudden now have to try to come back. And they'll try to do it, starting with Sweeney. He'll be followed by Suzuki and Ellis in the bottom of the fourth. Sweeney grounded out to the second baseman, Cano, in the first inning. Burnett has walked three and struck out three. And he has thrown 61 pitches in the first three innings, so his pitch count is up a little bit. Big bouncer to Cano. And that's out number one. And Suzuki will hit. I feel a mention in that Mariners game. The pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles is Brian now Mattis, Mattis who's the a fine young left handed pitcher who started the season on the disabled list. It's his first start, so if he's starting today, Orioles have an off day tomorrow. Certainly looks like the A's would see Brian Mattis, the left hander, at some point in that three game series Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Guthrie pitched last night. And Bergenson and Tillman, two guys that started here, had been sent down yeah, to Triple A. That's right. Uh, Matt has taken a place of one of those. And Ray, you looked at the weather, and of course, very hot East Coast, and we are going to Boston and Baltimore. Looks like it's going to be fairly nice in Boston, but at least. Uh, Extended forecast hot in Baltimore. Upper it's always East. hot in Baltimore. Yeah, it is not this time of year though. Usually it's more July, but it also doesn't rain on June the first in Oakland, but it did today. <laughs> Gray is my weather forecast guy that I go to. Yeah. Most people have a website that they check. Local news. I just go to Ray, and he's got it all for me. I checked Baltimore, and I got home after the game last night. Two in the morning is 87 in Baltimore. That's not good. It's not an Arizona 87 either. No, no. it is sticky. Yeah. I just hope the rain stays away. He's going to three cities where it's possible mm -hmm. rain showers could occur. Whereas people coming out here go to the Sierras and see snow. Yeah, you could ski right now if yeah. you want. One and two to Kurt Suzuki. Another foul ball. Mark Ellis in the on deck circle. A's have just two hits against Burnett so far. Ninety three miles an hour, but outside. Kurt is one for seven in this series. And this one could be playable to share up. And he's got it. If you're looking for a way to entertain clients or employees, why not check out the A's barbecue chairs? Barbecue chairs includes a catered pregame meal. And a game ticket in a private lower box seating area. For more information, call 510 638 Go A's or visit OaklandAthletics.com slash groups. There is the barbecue terrace in left field. Both barbecue terraces right in full swing today. Left field, one in right field corner. A lot of home runs hit in those areas. Right to be Oakland A's home runs.
Margellis walked in the second inning. Mark two for seven in this series. Six for 25 in his career against A.J. Burnett. Burnett reaches down, grabs it, guns it to first, and that's a three up, three down inning. So we're headed to the fifth. It'll be Teixeira, Rodriguez, Cano, Yankees lead four to two. Today's baseball is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Check out the Bourbon Barbecue Steak Grilled Sandwich. An exclusive participating restaurants, Jack in the Box. So, first pitch swinging, Mark Teixeira he does not wait around as he lines a single into left field. So, Teixeira has his first hit. He wasn't even waiting for you. No. He, now batting. He should. It's Jack in the Box. Alex Rodriguez. So that is hit number five, and here comes Alex Rodriguez, who has had a good afternoon. And as soon as that hit was recorded, Michael Wirtz, who maybe gets in earlier today than he did last night. One of the concerns Bob Guerin and Ron Romanic had, and talking about the outstanding bullpen, seven quality relievers. But the one thing they didn't want to really think about was having a starting pitcher. Leave early, like the fifth inning is considered early when you have a, a staff, a starting staff that can usually go six, at least maybe seven innings, turn it over to the bullpen. But last night, Brent Anderson short, and same hope that's not the case for Gio today. Shallow center field, Coco's coming in, and Mark Ellis going back, and Ellis is going to get back there to make the catch. So Rodriguez is retired for the first time today. There are the two starters. In the first two games, Trevor and Brett. Now looking cool on their sunglasses. They have to sweatshirts on. And Mike Wood saying, Can I just throw easily, softly, and let Gio get the fifth and maybe even the sixth? Inning. So this first pitch to Cano will be pitch number 85 for Gonzalez. No broken bat slowly hit to Ellis out at second and on the exchange ball pops out of Pennington's hand. So to share is called out and that was the right call it looked like. Well, there's no chance absolutely no chance to turn a double play. And with Pennington no, make the transfer trying to throw the thing that Mark to share did which was very smart before he headed back towards the dugout. Kind of popped his hands together and wanted confirmation from second base umpire that it was a transfer. He didn't want to head back to dugout and have 
a uh, no throw or a an error or a drop ball and be tagged out. You don't see that often. The guy just assumes he's going to be out and heads back to the dugout. Two outs for Swisher, who takes a fastball a bit outside. One and zero. Swisher with the three-run homer in the fourth inning, and that is the biggest hit in this game so far. It gave the Yankees their four to two lead. Mark Teixeira. There it is. I, you know, I, I tell you, that's the first time I've really seen that, where an infielder or a runner actually asked for confirmation. But a smart move. Very smart. And even better camera work. Tommy Enns is on. Oh, man, is he sharp. Two and zero to Swisher, and three and zero to Swisher with Russell Martin in the on deck circle. I think he has a green light. Three and zero. Yep, I do too. And the pitch. On the outside corner for a strike, three and one. Swisher now with four home runs and 23 RBIs for the season. The batting average still low, 216. And there's a strike on the inside corner. So good pitch sequence by Gio Gonzalez, outside corner, and then the inside corner. And Gio would more definitely taken a first pitch strike. In the last at bat, that had the corner, and look where Jim Joyce, home plate umpire, set up on the left shoulder. Off catcher Kurt Suzuki, typical of an umpire to do that. Runner goes, 3 2 pitch is inside, and that's the walk. Here's our Farmers Insurance Report Card. It's the best and worst records for the month of May, and that's in the major leagues. The best, the Diamondbacks, no surprise there, and the Red Sox, both 19 and 10. Russell, the worst, the Colorado Rockies, 8 and 21. At the Royals, who are scoreless, hosting the Angels today. And look at their 10 and 17, and maybe the 17 losses, and think how many leads they had late. Mm -hmm. At the point that okay, Soria has been removed as a closer for Ned Yost and the and the Royals. They had several against the Rangers and the Angels, yeah. at least a few in which they had the lead going in the ninth inning and ended up losing the games. In the AL West, the Mariners went 15 and 11 in there. The A's went 14 and 15. The Angels went 14 and 16. And the Rangers went 13 and 15. So, really, the Mariners, the only team that had a good month of May. Shallow left center field. Coco Chris coming in, and Coco's going to get there. Side retired. The Yankees strand a pair. We're going to the bottom of the fifth inning. It'll be Kuzminov, Pennington, and Chris. 4 2 New York.
First 1925 Lou Gehrig of the Yankees pinch hits for Pee Wee Leninger, beginning his streak of playing 2,130 consecutive games. The next day, first baseman Wally Pip <laughs> shows up with the after effects of a concussion, and Lou Gehrig takes over at first base for Wally Pip. And that's the story. And Wally gone. <laughs> <laughs> <He> gone. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Wally Pip. I mean, now, anytime you get replaced, you get Wally Pip. That's not good. Lou Gehrig, what a player. Well, he was muscular in the time when you didn't do anything except just pick up a bat. 21 31 consecutive games played. Game a record that nobody thought would be broken. Cal Ripken just flew by by another 400 or so. and. When I was talking to A's manager Bob Guerin, he was talking about giving a player a day off after playing 18, 19 consecutive games. And, and I said, Skip, you're right. And that's why Cal Ripken's record will never be broken. That's right. I mean, to play 2,632 consecutive games is just hard to imagine. And on a sad note, you don't want a disease named after no, you. No, absolutely not. He died very young. And Catfish Hunter, the same. Yep. A ALS, and that's yeah, sad. Cliff Pennington struck out swinging in the third inning. Burnett has retired five in a row, including a three up, two down fourth inning. Still 1 1 Orioles and the Mariners, that game in the bottom of the sixth inning up in Seattle. And the Angels and the Royals, no score in the fourth. And again, Pennington swings and misses, striking out. So sharp breaking curveball from A.J. Burnett. Try to recognize the span and realize that it was a curveball. Times or not, it's going to break out of the strike zone. That one did. And it was a pretty good pitch thrown by Burnett. Not uncharacteristic of him. Well, the first pitch to the leadoff man, Coco Crisp. Outside corner, that's a strike. Coco walked in the third, stole a base, but was stranded at second. And that one's ripped past Teixeira down the right field line, and watch Coco go. He hits the bag at second, never breaks stride, and he's going to have a sliding triple. What a great thing to watch. The ball just past the diving and the stretch of Mark Teixeira hooking away from him. And Coco Crisp, and he is thinking three as soon as he hit the ball. And that's a peak there. And then he picked up Mike Gallego to get confirmation to go for third. Pop-up slide. Really no chance to get it. Fifth triple. He ties. Curtis Granderson of the Yankees for second. Peter Borges leads the league in triples with six. That's it. He's been slumping today. The Jesus chops one slowly. Cano charges, and Burnett gets out of the jam. So Crisp is stranded, and we are headed to the sixth inning from the Coliseum. Four to two Yankees.
Friday, it'll be game one of the weekend series at Fenway Park, A's Red Sox. A's pregame live starts at 3.30. It'll be Josh Outman, Clay Buckholtz. Complete A's coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and on CSNCalifornia.com. So the A's head to Fenway Park. A's will be at Fenway twice this year. Friday, Saturday, Sunday in Boston. Always fun going to Fenway Park. Great atmosphere. Sell out crowds. And you're usually into it. So. Especially they'll stay to the bottom of the eighth inning when Sweet Carolina's playing. Yeah, that's right. Assume that Neil Diamond is still featured there in the bottom of the eighth inning. And they could be losing 20 to nothing. And they'll stick around to the bottom of the eighth and then everybody leaves. <laughs> Although they might stick around thinking there's going to be a comeback. The Red Sox are notorious for being the hardest 27 outs in baseball at Fenway. Andrew Jones pops it up. Kuzminov fighting that son and he hangs in there and makes the catch. So that's out number one. Here's the rest of the pitching matchups for the weekend. So Outman by Colts on Friday then on Saturday remember that's a time change will come your way at 10 o'clock in the morning back here in the Bay Area Cahill and Beckett. So that is a marquee matchup and then Anderson and Lackey on Sunday another morning telecast back here in the Bay Area. So as you said Ray the the A's are skipping. Moscoso, their fifth starter, they're using the day off tomorrow and they're able to skip him. And keeps Cahill Anderson in line, which is what you like to do. Well, and that may be a result of Tyson Ross and Brandon McCarthy being on the same list because the season started and they were not going to be changing the rotation, but that did change with those two going on the DL. Of course, Dallas Braden, in addition to those two, three guys out. And Josh Outland will be pitching Friday. Let's go so. We're going to start in Baltimore. Nunez chases a high pitch. He strikes out. That's strikeout number four for Gio Gonzalez. Well, he's throwing some good curveballs and a very aggressive hitter going out of the strike zone. So Michael Wirtz was up last inning, the fifth. And now Joey Devine starts the sixth to get loose. And he has stopped throwing. That was pitch number 100 for Gio. So Jeter steps in. He's one for two with a double, and he was also hit by a pitch. He scored a run. This pitch just a little outside. One and zero. Joey Devine is starting to loosen up. Who's been off? Let's it roll foul. Nineteen ninety-six. Look at the year for Derek G. We showed you the night started in nineteen ninety-five. Tim Belcher was that who we showed it in the first Seattle. Hit. Yeah. Yeah, the first hit to Derek G. One thing I've always been impressed about G. The way he plays the game, plays it hard, and wants to play every day, and don't ever tell him he can't do something. If you do that, then he'll do exactly what you said he couldn't do. First year of arbitration, Yankee said, You can't hit home runs. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if they can do that. His home run high for years, 24. He's also hit 23. What year did he hit 24? 1999. That was about when people started That's saying, exactly. Can't hit home runs. <laughs> His arbitration eligibility, yeah. Sweeney gets back there. He makes the catch. So Gio Gonzalez has a three up, three down inning, and we're going to the bottom of the sixth inning. Jackson, Willingham, and Sweeney to hit.
Freeze Cam is brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Bottom of the sixth inning, the A's trailing four to two. Nick Swisher, the three run homer that gave the Yankees the four to two lead, A.J. Burnett. 82 pitches through five innings. It's amazing when you have gotten knocked around a little bit in the first two games of the series, Rick. The score is only four to two, but it feels like it's six to two. So there's time for the A's here in this game. A uh, two out double by Rodriguez in the first, a three run home run by Swisher in the fourth. Otherwise, Geo's just given up one hit in the other four innings. I'd like to see a pretty good chance that 105 pitches is going to be finished. and. See the A's score him a couple, two or three runs, maybe three, give him the lead, and let the bullpen try to save it for him. So 0 and 1 to Connor Jackson, who has popped out to short and walked. Willingham waits in the on deck circle. He's looking for some base runs. They did get a triple by Crisp in the fifth. Came with two outs. They could not get him home. And line drive into the glove of Robinson Cano for out number one here in the sixth. Ace Baseball and Comcast Sports at California is brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. Cash Creek's heat wave giveaway. Win cash, prizes, match play, and more every day. Visit CashCreek.com for details. Turned out to be actually a pretty comfortable day after the rain this morning. And sunshine for most of the ball game. Now the forecast from yesterday about today did not look good. So fortunately the A's have been able to start this game on time and have it turn out to be a very nice day. Maybe it's all the clouds and rain around the Coliseum and overhead the sun is shining and. 40% chance of rain is happening 100% and that 30 to 40%. <laughs> you can explain that. That's your theory behind <laughs> the rain percentage. I'm not saying it's wrong. I think it's a great theory. Just learned about it in spring training. It sounds logical. And they say it's a 30% chance of rain. That means it's 100% rain and 30% of the year. Mike, Mike, what do you think about that? <laughs> My partner's a complicated man sometimes. <laughs> but you may be right. Right now at the Coliseum, we're in that percentage where it's not raining. That's good. I like to say if it says 50%, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Ray's theory is it's going to rain. <laughs> you just want to be away from the percentage where it is going to rain. There you go. Swing and a miss by Willingham. He strikes out. Five strikeouts for A.J. Burnett. That's a much harder curveball from Burnett to the point of Josh saw it right there as a fastball, maybe or at least Not something many. to hit. Then great rotation. And that's a Ryan quality pitch. Quality curveball. With the off day tomorrow, it's like Gio Gonzalez, who is pitching very effectively now, looks like he might be going out for the seventh inning. We've seen Wirtz and Devine warming up in the bullpen, but with the off day tomorrow, an extra day for Gio. Maybe that's the reason he will be going out. Ron Romantic brought up a very good point when we talk about pitch counts and everybody talks about pitch counts and say, I like Ron Romantic. It's a little bit frustrated. He brought up a good point. He said, if you want someone to throw 110 pitches, you train them to throw to 110. 110. Yeah, that's right. You, you can't stop at 100 and expect the pitcher to throw 110, 115, 120 if he's training to throw 100. And I've heard often about minor league pitchers are kind of programmed to throw 100, maybe an extension beyond that at a certain time, depending on whether they're on regular rotation or not. But, but I, I've that theory, and I can understand why he's frustrated, and pitching coaches would be frustrated. Train. You train for a certain number. And, you know, 
everything is kind of regulated. Right back to Burnett, and that's going to be a very easy three up, three down inning for A.J. Burnett. He's retired nine out of the last ten. We're headed to the seventh, four to two athletics. Rivera pitched in his 1,000th career game last Wednesday against Toronto at Yankee Stadium, becoming the 15th pitcher all time to reach the 1,000 appearance plateau and the first to reach it with one team. No pitcher has appeared in more games for a single team in baseball history than Mariano Rivera. And he's way ahead of everybody, and you got to go back a ways. So that's quite an accomplishment for Mariano Rivera. And as the game stands right now, the A's would see him in the ninth inning as a save situation is present right now. But uh, the A's can make a comeback. So who's warming up for the A's now? I think it's Joy Devine again. Granderson, Teixeira, and Rodriguez here in the seventh inning. Foul tip so the count one and two. Granderson is 0 for three with a couple of strikeouts. He also hit a fly ball to right field in the third inning that Ryan Sweeney came in, made a sliding catch on. Kurt Suzuki may have gotten hit a little bit on the foul ball as Jim Joyce. Do a little housekeeping around home plate. Give Suzuki a little time. This one skied. Shallow left. Pennington. He's fighting the sun as well. Backpedaling in. He reaches back at the last minute to make the catch. And he was getting no help from Josh Willingham. Josh, of course, a very tough sun field for left fielders. He broke back and did not see it. And fortunately, Cliff Pennington did. Kept backing up and. And a burst of wind took it as he made a nice catch. So Bob Guerin's coming out. 109 pitches for Gio Gonzalez. And that is going to do it. So Gio will not get his sixth win today. He leaves after six and a third. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change. Tune up and smog experts.
today. Five hits, four runs, four walks, and four strikeouts in 109 pitches. So Joey Devine comes in with one out here in the top of the seventh. Nobody aboard. And he'll face Mark Teixeira. So Teixeira swings around to hit from the left side. First pitch is outside. Joey Devine pitched in last night's game. One inning, 19 pitches, had a strikeout. Devine did not pitch in game one of this series. Connor Jackson stays down on it. Teixeira is retired for out number two. And that'll bring up Alex Rodriguez. Now batting. Number 13, Alex Rodriguez. Single and a double for Rodriguez this afternoon. He's also scored a run and knocked in a run. First pitch swinging, skies it. And Mark Ellis, he's fighting the sun as well. It is tough, folks, but Ellis stays with it, makes the catch. So Joy Devine quickly disposes of to share and Rodriguez seventh inning stretch for two New York. by Xfinity, home of the most live sports, and by Chevrolet. Go to ChevyBaseball.com to support youth baseball and help make a moment kids will never forget. Bottom of the seventh inning from the Overstock.com Coliseum. And he scored the catcher, two eight. runs in the first. They have not scored since. Brett Gardner comes in the game. He will be in left field. Andrew Jones is out. Willingham, the two run homer back in the first. And since the first, the A's have just one hit. So A.J. Burnett has been good and he's been better lately. He's retired 10 of the last 11. First pitch to Kurt Suzuki, way outside. That is David Robertson. The Yankees bullpen has been very good this year. And in this series, they've been very quiet. Yeah. Malone and Garcia, the first two starters in this series. Very good. They have the best bullpen ERA in the American League. Breaking ball down and away. Two and one to Suzuki, who has grounded out to second and fouled out 
to first. And there's your bullpen ERAs, 2.92. The A's fourth in the American League in that category. Gardner to his left, and that's out number one. So Kurt Suzuki is 0 for 3. Now ready. Second baseman, number 14, Mark Ellis. So that'll bring up Mark Ellis, who has been a base runner today. He walked in the second and then bounced back to Burnett in the fourth. Mark is two for eight in this series, and he takes a fastball a bit high. Did we see Hideki Matsui at some point today? Another fly ball. Playable for Swisher, who reaches up at the last minute to make the catch. So two quick outs here in the seventh. Orioles and the Mariners are still tied 1 1, bottom of the seventh inning. And Angels and the Royals 0 0 in the sixth. The Rangers won today 3 0 over the Rays. Colby Lewis won eight innings, eight strikeouts. So Colby Lewis is now 5 and 5. And they beat David Price. Who is now six and five? Sharp breaking ball is in the dirt. One and one the count. Fuentes is been loosening out in the A's bullpen. Jeter has it. And a three up, three down inning. Seven in a row retired by A.J. Burnett. So we're going to the eighth inning. Still 4-2 Yankees. Top of the eighth inning, it is the Yankees four, the A's two. The A's are going to need some late inning magic to avoid being swept in this series. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog expert. Brian Fuentes comes in. He'll face Cano, Swisher, and Martin. He's just trying to keep it 
a two run deficit. First pitch to Cano is way inside. Cano is grounded out, walked and scored, and reached on a fielder's choice. Jabba Chamberlain starts to throw. Two and oh. A lot of times you use a percentage. Cano a lefty. Joe Gonzalez faced him, walked him on four pitches back in the very tough fourth inning. And now Ron Fuente is brought in to face this switch hitter, or this left hand and this switch hitter, Nick Swisher, and first two out of the strike zone. Now, and Cano, listen, Cano's a great hitter. The splits, he's hitting 313 against lefties, 268 against righties, so that. Tells you something there. Home run he hit last night. Yeah. He is not bothered by no. left handed pitchers, what we're seeing. Just like that. He just got a fastball out over the plate and ripped it into left field for a base hit. Well, last night, a Robinson Cano home run. How about a curveball? Now batting. He knew it was going. 33. I think everybody did. Nick Just the sound Swisher. of Cano crushing a curveball from Brett Anderson. Brett Anderson in a fastball, a lefty. And then Cano. 25, 29 home runs. <laughs> That's the second baseman, folks. Over 200 hits. Yeah. And you want your power at the corners? Well, they've got it also at second base. And Cano. Don't you know? <laughs> is that John Sterling? Is that of a John course. Sterling? Of course. Well, they got a Swisher list today, too, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. That's David Sterling, the longtime radio voice of the New York Yankees. The only radio man that wears a coat and tie. Every day. Every day. Yeah. I like that. He's dressed for TV on radio. And he's got it. Signature call for each of the Yankee hitters. And from what we understand, when Nick Swisher hits a home run, it is Swishalicious. Which I believe Swisher, like, give himself that name, Swishalicious. Yeah, from in Chicago. <laughs> there is John. John? Yeah. John is one of those. Broadcasters back in time where has the, the microphone, it's not a headset like we're wearing. And Kim Korak has a, a microphone that looks he's holding it right now instead of having it attached to his head. But John will put one finger in his ear. See, so he's got the in the right ear, he's got the earpiece, and then as the play is about ready to start, he'll put the finger in the left ear and talk into it. There's Kim Korak with the mic. Supposed to have better quality sound, I think, right? That's what we hear. Just a bit outside. So one and two the count to Swisher, who in the minds of the Yankees indeed was Swisherlicious in the fourth when he hit the three run. Kendrick with that microphone is gone. That's so wrong. <laughs> Jackson into foul territory and he makes a nice running kick. So Swisher is retired. He's one for three, and that'll bring up Russell Martin. Now batting, number 55, Russell Martin. Russell Martin did not play Monday because he had found the ball off his big toe. So he seems to be running okay today since he stole a base back in the fourth inning uncontested. Hey, his bullpen is quiet. Chamberlain is loose and ready to go. For the Yankees. 
Adam Jones just hit a solo home run for the Orioles in the top of the eighth inning to give the Orioles a two to one lead. Fastball inside corner strike to Russell Martin. Martin has hit a pair of fly balls to center field and walked. He also stole a base in the fourth inning. Cano with a pretty short lead at first. He's not going anywhere. And there's another strike. One and two. That looks like the bullpen's going to come in for the Yankees. The A's trailing by two at this point. And of course, uh, Ross Child, the pitching coach, and Joe Girardi would probably like to plan for Chamberlain the eighth and Rivera the ninth. So the A's not able to do much against. Burnett, so maybe the bullpen will have better success against him. Ace Baseball Comcast Sports in California is brought to you by Wendy's. Try Wendy's new natural cut sea salt fries. So two outs here in the top of the eighth inning, and see Brett Gardner hit for the first time. Gardner came into the game to play left field. Bottom of the seven. First pitch is outside. So Joey Devine, two thirds of an inning as he the final two outs in the seventh. Front is getting his first action in this series. Last pitched on Sunday. We got the save against the Orioles. And that was Andrew Bailey's first game. I wonder if we'll see Bailey today. Inside corner strike. Well, with the day off tomorrow, may not be a bad idea. We'll get Bailey into the game. Eduardo Nunez, the on deck hitter. Who's been off? Picks it up, throws across the diamond, side, retired. Lead off single by Cano, but nothing else for the Yankees. Bottom of the eighth, coming up, four to two, New York.
Here's our game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Yankees got on the board in the first. Alex Rodriguez with a two-out RBI double. The A's took the lead in the bottom of the first. Willingham a two-run homer, so it was two to one A's after one, but this is the big hit in the game. Fourth inning, Nick Swisher, a three-run homer. And that gave the Yankees a four to two lead, and their lead is still four to two. Four, six, and oh for New York. 2-3-0 and oh for the A's. A.J. Burnett and Gio Gonzalez, both the starters, are gone. As the Yankees have gone to their bullpen. So when it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up. Your Oil Change Tune-Up and Smog Experts. Jabba Chamberlain comes in. Just six walks in 28 innings, and he throws hard. He was a starter. Reliever now basically set up guy for Mo Mariano Rivera Chris Dickerson in right field So the outfield has changed left and right From Jones to Gardner and Swisher to Dickerson This game very reminiscent of the A's opening game of the 2011 season against the Seattle Mariners He's very excited when the first inning Josh Willingham hit a two-run home run off King Felix I think It made him angry because he did not give up anything Rest the way to the athletics and he's lost the opener. Today, AJ Burnett, the two hits in the first inning, just won the next six. The A's have not been able to do anything offensively. Quick 0 2 to Cliff Pennington. Strike three call, the fastball right on the outside corner. So on three pitches, Pennington strikes out, and that's the third time he has struck out today. Right on the corner. No waste pitch from Jabba Chamberlain. Now batting, center fielder, number four, Coco. So Coco Crisp will hit. Chamberlain. Chamberlain is 25 years old, and this is his fourth year already in the big leagues. And there's a line drive, base hit center field by Coco Crisp. He's two for three, and just the fourth hit for the A's. Now Coco, the two-out triple, and he's stranded at third base. This time gets a one-out base hit. Let's see if he thinks about trying to score or steal his way in a scoring position. No stride, upper body, and it's amazing. And it's excellent hitting. Allows you to stay back a little bit. Russell Martin can throw well as he showed when Coco stole second earlier. A big jump and still almost three. Now. First pitch strike to De Jesus, who's one for three with a double. Bailey is getting loose for the eighth on the bullpen. Mariano Rivera is not throwing, but he's starting to stretch down the right field line. There's a shot to right, and that's a base hit. So back to back, one out singles. And the A's got something going here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Jesus is two for four. And with Nick Swisher out, it's a high fastball from Chamberlain. Dickerson not playing nearly as shallow, as shallow as Nick Swisher was. That ball dropping in front of Dickerson as he charged in. So the A's in the middle part of the batting order. Well, they've been waiting for an opportunity for a while now, and they have it here in the eighth. And here's Connor Jackson. Jackson back to Chamberlain and he throws to first a double play. <laughs> Connor Jackson hit a bullet right back to Chamberlain and that's how the bottom of the eighth ends.
Ended quickly and unfortunately for the A's. Well, that was similar to what happened last night. Freddy Garcia had a ball. This one, though, snagged by Chamberlain. A very good play reaching up, but did you see where Cano was? Yeah. That ball was going right to Robinson. Exactly. Right yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, either way, it was going to probably, yeah. well, might have been just one out. Yeah. If it had gone to Cano. But look where Cano yeah, is. It, yeah. Right see there that? is where the ball is going to go. And see, that was right yep. to him. But a nice play, and yeah. you're right. It, if it goes to Cano, it's probably just one out. Instead, it's a rally killing double play. And a defense of David DeJesus, who was at first base, when a ball takes off, all you have to do is take one step. I mean, you're already getting a big lead because the runners at first and second. You say, well, line drive should not be double off, but it, as far as he is off, he's got to be double off. It's not like he was taking off and on the way to second base. One and two to Eduardo Nunez. So Andrew Bailey comes in. It's good to see Bailey when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. Bailey got in the game on Sunday as we mentioned earlier. Bailey leaps and grabs it and throws to first to get in. There's one out. Well, you know, this is not a same situation and. Andrew Bailey is the man gets up Mariano Rivera, but for Andrew Bailey trying to get back on track and the fact that he is pitching the ninth inning today would indicate that maybe the A's who are trailing in this game putting him into the ninth that that's exactly where he will step in and the medic kind of indicated that the other day I said at what point is he ready to close he said now so sure. I'd say there's that one chance of pitching which he did Sunday. First day back comes in in a non safe situation. But in the ninth inning today, and probably where he will be as he continues. We hope that he stays healthy. He's an important member of his club. So Jeter dribbles one toward Jackson, and that's two outs, and that'll bring up Granderson. In the ninth inning, it'll be Willingham, Sweeney, now and ready. Suzuki against Rivera. Curtis Granderson. Mariano Rivera coming in, of course, a cut fastball master. And Andrew Bailey just threw one first pitch to Derek Jean and got him to ground out weekly. That's what Joe Girardi said. Not everybody that throws a good cut fastball, they all blame, or at least the Yankees blame Rivera because they said, Did you teach him that one too? Yeah, at the All Star game. <laughs> That's right. He was teaching everybody in the pen. In the All Star game, boy, he has. A great cut fastball velocity wise it's amazing as many years as he has pitched. It's not changed. As far as the velocity in which he throws. So if you're a Yankee teammate you have a legitimate argument because you can say. <laughs> the guys you're talking to are already all stars. Exactly. And now you're teaching them the cutter. Yeah. Killing us. Now th on. This would be the position players who are upset. The <laughs> yes. Pitchers exactly. are, are helpful. They want to learn as much as they can. <laughs> Andrew Bailey and developed him. Of course, the, the cut fastball is an outstanding pitch for him. And Andrew Bailey celebrated a birthday yesterday. So, happy birthday a day later for Bailey. Two pitches a bit high. I think it was 26 for Bailey. Is that right? He's 27 now. He's getting up there, isn't he? Yeah. 27 years old. Right center. Coco on the move, and he will get there. Track it down. Nice play by Coco Chris. So here we go. Bottom of the ninth. Mariano Rivera is coming in. It'll be Willingham, Sweeney, and Suzuki. The A's trailing. Four to two.
in the first inning. 3 1 fastball from A.J. Burnett. A two run home run for Willingham, his tenth of the season. And that would give the A's an early 2 to 1 lead. It lasted until Nick Swisher hit a three run home run in the fourth. So Willingham, no chance to tie it with a two run home run since he's leading off this inning. And he was our Fremont Bank play of the game. What the hitters have done against Rivera. The numbers for Sweeney. So here comes Willingham with Mariano Rivera finishing his warm up tosses. He's ready to go. Bottom of the ninth, Yankees four, A's two. So here's Willingham, a two run homer in the first. This pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change, tune up and smog experts. The numbers this year for Rivera 13 for 16 in save opportunities. Fouled off Martin. First two pitches 92 miles per hour. The first one the cutter, the second one did not look like it cut that much. Just a good fastball inside off the mask. Martin checking out the left side of his face. Jim Joyce walking to the mound, giving him some time. I'm all right. See all the padding around the face and the forehead. The, the conventional mask with a slight extension off the chin. 0 oh 2. Setting up inside and it runs inside. So Mariano Rivera is now 41 years old and this is his 16th full year in the big leagues. 572 career saves. Strike three call. The cutter on the inside corner. And it's just so difficult for hitters to pull the trigger. Well, front door cut fastball is very difficult. Right hander and maybe Tommy can. Let's see what this looks like. Well, that's questionable. I mean, maybe got a, an edge of the black where this black is covered up with the dirt, but Jim Joyce on the inside corner watching the pitch. Also throw the cutter inside the lefties down and in. But consistently 91 92. Pretty much everything he throws for Rivera. I think the first pitch he threw in spring training was 92. And it had to cut to it. Sweeney got a piece, so it's 0 2. Rivera got to the big leagues in 1995. He's the career save leader. So Rivera, he's got a two year contract, so he signed through next year. So he may not catch Trevor Hoffman this year, make it close. But he's just 29 away. <laughs> <laughs> That's. That's uh, it's gonna get close. 16, 29, that's uh, in 45, which is not unrealistic. Sweeney has bounced out three times. The one two pitch is popped foul back. Rivera got to the big leagues in 95 and he made 19 appearances, 10 of them starts. Yeah. But then in 96, that's when he went to the bullpen and was the setup man for Wetland and he was terrific. And then after that, the saves started to come in bunches. Broken bat toward Cano. And that's out number two. See Josh Willingham and the A's bench talking to Mark Ellis. He took his hand and formed a circle. What he's saying, that's the size of the baseball, and that's the window now, Maddie, that Rivera throws it in. I mean, it's a, remarkable control. And but he does not throw. Another pitch, am no. I right? No. Cut fastball, he'll That's straighten it. it out. I mean, I, I think it's just a, a natural cut. And I think back to Jim Abbott when he pitched and he threw a lot cut of fastballs. And he got the point that he couldn't throw a four seamer. But I don't think Rivera now that was just a very slight cut. But we were throwing 91 92. So you cut fastball. Yeah. I mean that's and there's always movement. The hitter thinks he's on the pitch and you think you're gonna hit it in the barrel and the sweet spot and it takes it to the end of the bat or jam. But the control is so great. I mean four walks in now 22 innings. One 
one pitch. Foul that. So now one and two to Kurt Suzuki. Hideki Matsui has come out into the on deck circle. So he would hit for Ellis if Suzuki can get aboard. And you can only think about Marco Scudero, a three run walk off off of Rivera. And that one inside. Think of the men's warehouse sign behind in the backdrop signing George Zimmer. I'd like to see him guarantee something like a win, like a home run or something, or get on base. Come on, George, help yeah. us out. 2 2 pitch. Again, foul back. The Orioles have just defeated the Mariners. 2 to 1 is the final there. So Baltimore finally gets a win on their road trip and they defeat the Mariners. In the range, the Rangers playing in the East Coast time zone. Florida sit on a win and wait and see what everybody else does. Another foul ball. Angels and the Royals still scoreless that game now in the eighth inning in Kansas City. So Kurt Suzuki giving Rivera a good battle. Two and two is the count. Pop up, Cano out, and that's the ball game. So Rivera goes three up, three down in the bottom of the ninth inning. He gets career save number 573, and that man right there, Swisher, a three run homer in the fourth inning, and that gave the Yankees the four to two lead, and that is the final score. So a disappointing end to the homestand as the A's are swept by the Yankees. The final score this afternoon. The Yankees four and the Athletics two. Don't go away. A's post game live with Mindy Bach and Greg Catteray starts right now.